Okay, remember we sketched this out, or I sketched this out real quick here at the end of the last video. And that's what we're going to use. I've kind of evened things up here a bit. You always even these things up just by folding them over and holding them up to the window so you get your uh, get, get it balanced out perfectly. Well, anyway, then I went and I transferred it over on this block of wood. I cut this out of a piece of that honey for wood. It cost me $15.45. But believe me, I'll get a lot more money out of it than that. So I'm not worried about that. Anyway, I traced that pattern off. This is cut off a little down here at the bottom, probably about right there. So I just extended a little bit and added a foot on down here at the bottom to mount it on its final base. Okay? On the side, it's a three inch piece. And uh, I just sketched out loosely sketched out the shape of the uh, side profile that I want. So it's three inches here, five and a half inches crossed, and five and a quarter inches up and down. Alright? Now I'm not going to put this pattern on the internet. You guys have been following this blog long enough that you should be able to uh, figure those things out. So If you don't, going to have to wing it. And I'm going to go cut it out and I don't need to show you that either. Okay, we got her all cut out here. Now I told you before, when I saw out blanks, I always leave a little tag. Um, you know, people are always asking, well how do I cut these things out, you know, these profiles out, you know. And then you'll get replies saying, oh you got to tape it here, you use double sided tape, masking tape all sorts of stuff. Well this is really the easiest way to do it. If you just don't saw all the way through. And then after you get the both profiles cut out, it's just a matter of busting these things off. And looky there, you got your blank. See there? And you didn't have to go through all that rigmarole. Now, what I'm going to do, and I don't recommend that you do this, I will go over to my saw and I'll lop these corners off just freehanding it, just to save me some trouble. But you don't, you know, like I say, don't do that if you're not comfortable with your equipment. Alright, so right at the moment I'm just going to set that aside. We're going to go ahead and finish this head up, get that part completely done before we start working on that there. Okay, to add a little texture to his eyebrows here, just to keep them from laying flat, I'm just going to use a little flex steel curve tool here and just, just kind of indicate some movement. Not a lot, you know, I don't get carried away with this stuff. Just make your lines, you want them to flow with the direction of the eyebrow. I got a question about the eyes. You know, yesterday or last video, I mentioned that uh, a friend told me that he found out that when you move your eye, your eye protrudes farther in the direction that you're looking. And that's because the muscles on your eye, you know, you tighten up while one side tightens, the other side loosens. I'm assuming. So, on this figure to indicate that, that's why I made a deeper loop here and a deeper crease right here. A deeper loop here and a deeper crease right there. Because he's going to be looking right there.
you know, looks natural. Okay, now moving on to the hair. I always like to get a few curls in my hair there. Not a curl, but uh, just a direction. Of the Oh wait, when I do that, let me do one more here. And come back and kind of take out that little chip right there. Taking out those little chips make it look like the hair curls in underneath the, the other hair. And then down here on the bottom I'll just make a sort of a jagged edge to hard to see in here if it's like. And for just a little more texture, just take this little tool and slide it up each one of these things. Again, you got to be careful how your grain goes. Like that. See there? That looks good. Okay, and I'll just do that same thing all the way around this head clear over here to the other side, and that will be the end of uh, carving this head. Because when we uh, put a hat on him, it's probably going to come. Just about take off the top of his head, just about like that there. Poor guy. And when I take off the top of the head, I just go through my, my bandsaw in a straight through there. And invariably, it will not be even. And invariably, it will look good. Because hardly anybody ever gets their hat on straight anyway. Okay, on this one here. First of all, like I mentioned, I'm going to go over and lop off these corners. I'll be back in a second. Get to have this handle in there. Okay, I went and bought me one of these little uh, reciprocating carving things. I think I gave about 50 bucks for it. And then I had to buy some blades for it. I can't remember what those cost. I have three of them here. Just various gouges. A real shallow one, a little deeper one, and then a deeper one still. And these about do what I need it for because I don't use this thing too much but it does save me a heck of a lot of work so anyway what I use it for basically is on these uh, busts uh, it's just for roughing out the back areas or any other areas where there's still lots of uh, waste to contend with and it just hooks onto my uh, Fordham here and you just hit the control down there it gets kind of rackety but it's all right <laughs> You can see it really, it really does the job fast.
push a little too hard. Anyway, you can see that it really takes that wood off quick. And then if I want, I can just switch my uh, switch my bits. Put in the shallow one. And work on these areas up front where I just want to get you know, get it cleaned up to where I can come in with my knife and uh, do the finer work. jab that thing into my hand. Fortunately I haven't done that yet and I'm sure there's others over there out there saying God boy that guy sure doesn't know how to use that tool very well which is probably true but that's okay. So anyway I'm going to continue using this to go ahead and clean this thing up and uh, in the next video we'll start doing the detail on this so we can get that head stuck in there because I like to look at the head and everything in, it, in its body before he puts his hat on. I mean that's just the way things are and uh, that way we can tell exactly, you know, the best attitude or the best type of hat that we're going to put on his head. So until next time, I'll talk to you later.